Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. I'm so glad that you joined us today. This is the first of several meditations on living with regret and what to do about it. You know, I think all of us have done things, I know I have, that I really wished I hadn't, and from time to time I remember it, and it is painful. Now, Paul was the king of regret, really. Think about it. There he was with his brand new degree from the semi-famous school of rabbis in Jerusalem, all ready to go out in the world and do his thing for God. And what was the first thing that he did? Well, he held the cloaks of the men who stoned Stephen to death, and he approved. Sometime later, on the way to Damascus, he was in his on his own mission to destroy the church. When lo and behold, he has this vision of Jesus who asks him, why, why, why do you persecute me? And that why question stuck with Paul his entire life. Paul knew the sorrow of this world that comes back and steals our joy over and over again. Paul knew the sorrow of repentance and growth and freedom and new life. He knew them both. So he really is a master to learn from. I always think it's a good idea to go to somebody who knows what they're talking about. So let's go back to Paul. Just be aware of whatever words or phrase stands out in your mind. And I'm going to read this passage again. This time, from the New Testament for Everyone translation. Because God's way of sadness is designed to produce a repentance which leads to salvation, and there's nothing to regret there, but the world's way of sadness produces death. Yep. Yep. You close your eyes. Let's think on this for a minute. What seemed important to you as I read? Now pray with me if you will. Lord, one of the reasons I do not want to confess that I have done harm and regret it is I just don't know what to do next. I'm stuck with the sorrow. Nothing changes. Oh, maybe I feel better for a while, but it comes back. It always comes back and steals my happiness. Or I try to excuse myself saying, everyone does it. Or I resign myself with the thought, how can I change the past? Is that what Paul meant when he talked about the world's way of sorrow brings death? Because my past does threaten to steal the joy from my day each day, each hour. How can I expect to feel differently about past harm if I'm the same person today? I need your help, Lord, because that statement makes too much sense. But I know where it goes. You see, given the same circumstances, I would probably do the same thing. Uh, please grant me a new understanding of how today's decisions change how we see yesterday's regrets. In Christ's name, 
I dwell in your presence and ask for your wisdom. Sorrow is endless, isn't it? If nothing changes, we know we're the same person who did it. We know we're the same person that just might do it again. But repentance, don't you see? Repentance is about the only time that we can change. The only time that we can change is today. And repentance is about how we choose to act differently today than we did in our own past. If we change today, our relationship to our past changes, don't you see? Now I'm going to read to you again, this time from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase of the Bible, the message. Distress that drives us to God does just that. It turns us around. It gets us back in the way of salvation. We never regret that kind of pain. But those who let distress drive them away from God are full of regrets. They end up in a deathbed of regrets. 2 Corinthians 7, 10, the message. The stress that drives us to God does that, Peterson says. Confession is a recognition of our part in creating pain. Repentance is about change, healing, and wisdom. Why? Now, why would Peterson say we never regret that kind of pain? The pain of gaining change, healing, and wisdom. You may want to open your eyes now. If you've been with me before, you know I'm going to suggest that you write, write it down. Take some notes and look at them before you use this meditation again. And I suggest you use it four or five times next week. It's not very much time. And the, it's so important. We're talking about life change and wisdom. If somebody comes to you and you, and you think, oh, I wish they heard this, share it with them. Love shared with God is always good time. Shared in love with another and with God is even more terrific. Really. And now, dwell in the presence often. God bless you. Hope to see you again next Thursday, 8 a.m.